Hey Oregon State football fans, Carter Baines of BeaverBlitz.com here with another instant analysis video from Oregon State's fall camp. Today was day three. I'm sitting here in my car recovering from another hot day on the practice fields at the Pro Throw Complex, uh, sitting in the parking lot here at Research Stadium in the air conditioning. Uh, it was, like I said, another hot one. It's only going to get hotter tomorrow. Uh, and then luckily the team will take Sunday off uh, for the hottest day of the weekend. But even though, uh, you know, we're still limited here in, in the first couple of days, no full pads or anything, uh, still kind of ramping up. We've seen a lot from the team over the first four and a half hours of practice or so of the fall. And uh, the, the one thing that stands out to me is just how much rotation we've seen at each position. A lot of guys getting in and, and getting, wrong, getting run with the ones and twos in, in the few live periods that they've uh, that they've gone through. Yesterday, the story of the day, I think, was the defensive backfield really stepping up and, and starting to show uh, some of the potential that, that we've been touting and, and living up to the high expectations that we have for them. Today, defensively, I think it was the front seven that really stood out. Kyrie Fisher at linebacker uh, was playing really strong coverage, made a, uh, made a nice play on the ball, and and a really blanketed receiver in seven on seven. The defensive line, I think, held strong uh, in the run game. Now, running opportunities are few and far between until the team goes full pads and, you know, starts scrimmaging a little bit more. But, um, you know, normally at this point in, in camp, we see a breakaway run or two, and, and really we haven't seen that so far. So I think that's a really good sign from the front seven, uh, you know, that we're seeing them contain those running backs even though the reps really aren't there uh, to the extent that we'll see later in camp. Offensively, Ben Branson today at, at quarterback, I think was one of the standouts. Uh, completed a bunch of passes in a row during seven on seven and 11 on 11. Uh, I think he's got the best deep ball of any of the quarterbacks on this roster right now. Uh, but that's not to discount the play of, of Chance Nolan and Tristan Jebbia, who both look really a lot more comfortable in there. Jebbia's uh, clearly healthy and, and not limited in any way. And I think Nolan um, is, you know, throwing a tighter spiral and, and is working on that deep ball as well. So uh, quarterback obviously is a position we're going to be watching throughout throughout the fall. But the early returns there uh, seem to be pretty positive. I think, I think you know, again, it's, it's hard to gauge things until they go full. Uh, but there seems to be some, some noticeable improvement there. But... We'll be back again here in Corvallis tomorrow for the last practice of the first week. Uh, tomorrow will be day four, and then they'll have an off day on Sunday. So it'll either be myself or Angie Machado here, but uh, Beaver Blitz, as always, is your destination for fall camp coverage. We'll be back tomorrow and again throughout the, the month of August as we, uh, as we cover Oregon State football. So be sure to check out our post-practice interviews, which will be on this channel uh, at some point today, uh, we talked to Jaden Grant, Omar Spates, and Trent Bray after practice, and then the offensive players and coaches uh, from yesterday are already up there. Uh, if you haven't checked out our practice reports at Beaver Blitz, make sure to do so and take advantage of our 50% off sale that we've got right now on VIP subscriptions. We'll be back again tomorrow from fall camp. Carter Baines, Beaver Blitz, signing off.